afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting Fabian the Cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda Hero of like Defender of the Fatherland, of Hidden Designing One versus One. Oh, Samoski again. Yes, indeed. Sometimes it just happens. A map gets overrepresented. And today, this period it seems to be Samoski. We got in the south here, Prince of Denmark, who I'm recently sure is not from Denmark, fighting here for the king and country of the Commonwealth. Taking on the role of the 7th Armored Nation, trying to break through the German lines under the command of Caesar, playing for the Oberkommand West of Germany, Deutschland. Taking on the role here of the 107th Panzer Brigade. And he's got infantry and line infantry bulletins versus special weapons, mobile assault, and vanguard regiment with triple infantry here for Prince. Heading into double section start, Sean Pani is rushing for the center, watching and scanning the streets for any British action. With full skills then moving up and a cool line moving in, so it's going to push for the center pretty hard. It's going to have some, some troops over to kill the other side of the map here. They'll get some fuel for him pretty soon. Center point be secured here by the section with a third section on the way there for Prince. So he's quickly arming up there for some infantry combat. And sees the Steon Pioneers continuing to forge a path ahead against the Tommies. Looks like he, in this case he's spotted. A few shots with fire and he quickly falls back as Caesar sets about to pressure his curve point. So Caesar going in very aggressively here to try and gain control of the center of the map. Which might force Prince. In fact, he's sending out another section to try and push up through the eastern side a bit. Rare to see most players will just try and brute force away through here. But Prince here, clearly being a perhaps sharper as tactician than most others, opts for a different path or perhaps can't quite decide and moves up anyway. So perhaps he isn't as sharp as initially perceived. Who knows what's going on there? More folks are there arriving though for Caesar. Section falling over towards the northern point. He's thinking about the Sturm Pioneer. We're now setting up an ambush position so they can quickly hit anyone coming around here. Sneaky Caesar. In these sections moving up, they might in fact try to hit the cut off point instead. Perhaps not. We'll have to see what happens. There goes Sturm Pioneer. Catching the section here by the cut off point. Quickly moving in there. Sturm Pioneer should be able to close in quickly though. Without another. Ooh, there we go. Good hits in the next recover. Quickly causing some heavy loss of the Sturm Pioneers. Push down to three men. If we get another good hit, there we go. Looks like there's a small chance here for the section that's going to be pretty close. The assault rifles are doing quite ungodly work there in the section. There you go. Pulls through four section for Prince. So he's going for an infantry build here versus Caesar. He's also going for a reasonable infantry build. And there he goes. Secures the car point. Folks is nearby. Stuart Pioneer is going to need to be a bit careful. If oh, he's mining up while grabbing the point. Sneaky, sneaky. And these section ring about there. And section can secure territory up north as well. Section reinforcing. Take up there for Prince and the 7th Armour, the Desert Rats. Falls the opening up here from the house section. They're getting off a few good hits with their Lee Enfield rifles. And there goes wipe the Sturm Pioneers. Oh, he got a wipe on Caesar Sturm Pioneer. Caesar pushing his luck with that infantry support there. Got Pioneer. Could have been great if he pulled it off. In this case, though, he stuck around for too long and Prince punished him brutally. That's going to be a bit hard there for Caesar to replace in the early game. That is still 300 manpower gone. And particularly on a map like this with a lot of close quarters, the Sturm Pioneers do pack a bit of extra utility. So that was definitely not good. Section up north here being caught by the Kulvang. Cool Matron fight. We've got replacement Sturm Pioneers there for Caesar and the 1 and 7th Panzer Brigade. So we got four sections out here for Prince. Tech up done. We'll have to see what it goes for next. Will it be both sections, Bren guns, fast armored cars, sappers? What will it be here for Prince? As a second ball back here, apparently expecting a pot share for the carve point. And there you go. Ludwig quickly gets cut to ribbons there by the well aimed rifles of the British infantry section. Section moving from the east side there. But getting pursued here by Fulcher quickly pulling into heavy cover. Fulcher is up closer. Ship lose out here with a bit of good luck for the section. And then again, the section is a bit low in health itself. So who knows how this will turn out. A possible RNG. But there you go. More Fulcher moving in. We can see this seat or Prince's retreats right here. Not willing. Willing to spend more manpower than up north here. Kulvagen is actually in some problems here with the second heavy cover. Doing a lot of damage to the Kulvagen. We can sort of hit the calf point there or get up to the retreat path. You can maybe sort of destroy it, but no. We go straight for it. Still gets the Kulvagen though, so that's another loss here for Cease. He's now lost two units in the first five minutes of the game while he's controlled the center of the map there. He is suffering a uh, rather hefty price for it. And a fifth section out for Prince here. Fifth section. He is pushing in all the infantry you can get here. And definitely should be careful then about bolstering them because then he could quickly spiral into a manpower bleed to change that should just could keep him drained. We'll see though. Truck out there for Caesar. Could be Belgrade headquarters. He wants it up around here to set a four point. Or it could be a mechanized regiment and try to rush out a looks. We shall see what it ends up with here for Caesar. The ESPN 
Just here, the Sandbacks by the Cough Point. Being a bit harder there for Prince to push out on the Cough Point. And here in the east, the Gut Fox is in section playing a game here around Prince's Fuel Point. Just thinking up the game off a few hits of that cover bonuses. The section there might in fact be a bit taller as the Fox Gun Deers. They do have light cover, they have none, and they don't get their sort of uh, cover combat bonus. But there goes section flanking the Fox Gun Deers. Very good work. Other section attacking from the front. Hard to see though what Prince is uh, thinking. In five sections, this is a bit on the rarer end of the spectrum. Shanks doing plenty of squad moving in. He should probably just try and push up here and try and hit Caesar's fuel point, force him to have to divert resources elsewhere. In the south here, Fultz moving to this line of fire. The six fact moving up to them. That's a pretty big win there for Prince. The Fultz of this should uh, luckily end up dead because of that. We can see a fourth battle pit goes up. He's going to try and sort of uh, set up for something in there. That could work out, but it could also backfire there potentially on Caesar. Prince, they're going for the AC Mark III armored car. So now with five infantry sections, the two whaps against Caesar. Prince is steadily pushing now for much clearer map control here. And his decision to go then for the battle group headquarters of the front line means. Well, it's only against the reinforcement on the front line. He doesn't get anything he can sort of really push against all of this infantry. In fact, it's going to lack a counter to the armored car. I mean, Prince is most likely expecting the mechanized regiment since there's a lot of infantry sections. That is a very good counter. But. He doesn't go this. He's going to have to rely on a Ked. And as ultimately, he might like to concede a lot of territory then to Prince. So Caesar might be um, painting himself into a corner with this. We'll have to see how it goes. We'll have to see how it goes. Troops reinforcing. No sign of assault rifles here. In fact, he might have to go for a pantry strike on his storm pioneers to have a chance. But right now, we've got three full squads, one storm pioneer squad versus five infantry sections and an armored car. Things looking a bit stacked against Caesar here. They are looking a bit stacked. And he's lost both fuel points to the Tommies as well. Allowing here Prince to quickly edge ahead of the Germans. Which is definitely not something you want to happen. And there you go. Doctoral choice for Prince. It is special weapons. He calls in a tank hunter section. So we'll be seeing an awful lot of infantry. here. They are looking at overall six infantry squads. Five of them regular. One tank hunter. I think it's going to be more a bit difficult there for uh, Prince of Denmark to get any more infantry out without risking it. Oh dear. He actually went there. He bolstered his section. So he's going incredibly heavy on infantry. He is going incredibly heavy on infantry. And clearly the armoured division has been reinforced by infantry division just to really sort of push ahead here. A major offensive has been scheduled. And they're apparently committing most of the infantry to the process. So now Caesar's going to be in for quite the uphill climb here because he will be up against six bolstered sections. And he's got four infantry squads to try and fight this. And he's still outside to deal with the armored car, so that precludes stuff like the flat calf track right away. We got Jaegers appearing here. They should help apply a bit of bleed here to Prince. But uh, it's not going to be sort of a good long term solution. He also has to be careful with the fuel. Lead there that the Prince is gaining over Caesar here and the 1 and 7th Panzer Brigade. We've got two spring up, there we go, we got the Panzer Brigade up, should help alleviate things versus the AC. But it's not going to be the best sort of hard count, it's sort of, you know, something that sort of makes the AC a bit more careful around Caesar's men. Up north, fine, continue. Oh, we could see a wipe, we could see a wipe. Oh! There we go, one wipe against Prince of Denmark. He's trying to do too much here, and Caesar was able to take advantage of that, wiping out one section. That's a uh, decent slight turn back there for Caesar, having lost two units himself. Getting at least one wipe there on the Prince is going to have an effect. The Prince is very quick to replace it. So again, he's aiming for an infantry build here. He's aiming for a very infantry build. <clears throat> As for what Caesar's aiming for, that's a lot less clearer. At least he's making progress there in the north against those Tommies. Do you want me up? Second Jaeger squad. <coughs> Hang on, water didn't quite go down the way it's supposed to. But there you go, section versus Jaegers. Jaegers having flanked, there you go, pushing back a section. So Caesar's going to try for a sort of more aggressive infiltration strategy. Trying to that way, maybe. Do a bit of attritional fighting versus him, trying to bleed him out, but sort of catch him here and there. 
that could work out, but still, he has to focus more on the fuel, and if he goes on Austin, that could, I think, be it. He needs to try and take up then aim for some longer-term armor here versus Prince, who, of course, needs to take up himself. And Vickers could also be helpful here, or suppose a half tank. And Vickers K, though, he's spit off from that one. He's going for Sappers now, so we're going to see seven infantry squads there for Prince. Or about 35 men. In the southern fuel point there, so we can see Caesar sending out again aggressively. He's trying to catch a pun off guard instead of trying to you know, grind himself down versus Prince, which is definitely not the right strategy. He's trying to leverage the upper commander's uh, well, strength in uh, mobility to push ahead there. And he's going for a truck there that could be the Shrap Hunted Quarters. In which case, he's definitely aiming for a Panther 4, maybe a Yak Panther. Either way, he needs to push out some armor fast. And he still needs some kind of way of dealing with that AC. But likely he'll set up the Shrap Hunted Quarters around here. That's what most players do on Samoski. And overall, I kind of still wish they'd get around to just fixing the corner here on Samoski. That's really what needs to happen long term. Nesiegas Fox is moving in. Mine's down here, so he's trying to make it harder there for Prince to creep in with his infantry. Very good move there. Jaegers Fox is moving in there, pushing back the section, defending the fuel point, even as he loses the north one here to the Tommies, to the Inselafen. There you go, Shrap Hunted Quarter setting up there. And mine's going down there from Prince as well. Very good work, very good work. Troops pushing up. Plan hand grenade off. Shots fire. Both gonna be being pushed back. Our punter's quarter is almost done. Pretty risky situation because Prince could just bring up a pair of anti tank and just begin blasting out. It's going to be very difficult for Caesar to deal with that, so I'm not necessarily a huge fan of this setup. I mean, it's an aggressive one, but it's also one that could quickly be turned against Caesar. Bit of fun here with Dov Yegas versus the section here. They're just going to have to push for some of the fuel points again. Of course, Prince's heavy infantry build base make it a bit difficult there for Caesar to do exactly that. And he seems to be getting increasingly focused on the center again. Starling Garat Syndrome setting in. He can already now hear the order to not one step back into his mind. Which, of course, is going to be a bit perplexing since he never was at Starling Garat. But, you know, details, details. Quick one hand gun out of there against the church, burning it out. Bolter's moving up, Section Sam standing about there a bit as well in the east here, we've got Section pushed back. Jaeger's grabbing points for the Fatherland as Caesar storms the centre. His men shooting Tommies left and right, and the Tommies of course shooting back, trying to stop those dastardly Huns. Grenade are sold off here, clearing out the house, interiors and probably the house itself. Mine goes off, almost while we get the Stuart Pioneer squad. Caesar's assault runs to a few prompts, getting the cough point again there. Aggressive attack here, makes some gains there, pushing back some of Prince's troops. The problem is of course he can push in from as so many angles at Caesar. And return the favor. And Caesar is still quite some time off from any tanks. Whereas Prince is getting ever closer. In fact, he's managed to take up here. More Jaegers. Not say Orbital Darden. But Jaegers calling in a lot of them. And of course, the funny thing is, they're going for the Orbital Commander West. That's the sort of unit with the Jaegers. Despite, technically, the fact is, there were no real Jaegers on the Western Front, like the clothes you had were the SS Jaegers, were basically sort of special operation troops for the Ralph and SS under Scorsini. But like, there's sort of no real Jaegers, they're pretty much all on the Eastern Front, as a fun fact. So that's one of the things I also sort of find a bit weird, like, it's not the Wehrmacht that got the Jaegers, you know, the ones just, technically the ones of the Eastern Front Army, no, it's the Western Front Army that gets the Jaegers. There go, quick grenade assault here, gonna flush out those Tommies, there we go, a few good hits. So we'll see what Caesar does next. But he's now got seven infantry squads as well. So now there's sort of more raw numbers equivalents, these squad numbers equivalents, but there's still larger members there for Prince. And there he goes, section push back the Stuart Pioneer's Fox with armored car roaming about there. And here in the south, the Aegis are slowly grinding down the section there with, well, aimed shot as those fiendish. 
Inlanders. And there you go. Almost pushed back at the armored car there. Here the section is still maintaining a presence with the Germans up north. Another push here from Caesar. He tries to break the stranglehold of Prince. And he's seventh armored here. Jaeger's retreating, Jaeger's advancing, and there he goes, send it back. Can I begin seizing territory, hit for the fuel? He could probably consider some booby traps here and there with his Jaeger's. Bit of an overlooked ability, to be honest. And we got our Kedmev here for Caesar. Perhaps starting to fear the possibility of actual tanks. I'm mostly realizing he can't rely on the Panther Shake just there. So we basically got sort of the uh, two prongs heading out, one slightly larger north, one slightly smaller south, and it's clearly there it's going to be counter tank. He's got Bren guns out here, so no half tanks by the way for Prince to get him because case. We figured go that because he went for the special weapons, but for some reason he just goes for the regular weapon racks and adds in some Bren guns to gun down those Huns. Tank in the section there, Stuart Pine is occupying the church. And falls in for the south. We still got another Bren section there. Upon Hunt Gunner will likely use to flush it out. Burning things up there in the south. Jaeger's pushed back. Almost wiped out here by the sheer firepower. The double section of their wield. One of them at least been upgraded with double Brens. The other one only got one. But still that is three Bren guns. Which is an awful lot of firepower. Cromwell there for Prince. Caesar can soon go for Yark Panzer. But I'm guessing he's more likely to aim for either the Panzer IV or the Panther in these circumstances. And there you go, Cromlart here for Prince and the 7th Armored Vision. Panzerzik flies, connects with the AC. Stuart Pani soon needs to fall back here. Smoke pop. Oh, really low on health. He's risking, he's risking it. And there you go, retreat. They might in fact be too late here for the Stuart Pani. He just made a wrong decision. They ran out in front of the Bren gun section. There you go, wiped. Quite lost there for Caesar and the 107th Panzer Brigade. Got the Cromwell moving through here and he's got no Panzerzik now. He's only got like Kevin there for, to try and stop this Cromwell. So the difficulty has risen markedly here for Caesar. But he's quickly still trying to push it. He's still trying to make gain ground versus the Tommies. But he is taking quite a lashing in the process. Like kind of trying to set up good position here, but it's getting got cut on the move here by the Cromo. And there he goes, sets up, fires his 88 mm rocket, connects with the rear arm of the Cromo, sending the crew a bit further back as they do not intend to get blown up. Up north, Fox is on the run here from the armored cars and moves in. And there you go, can soon go for the Panther Fort, but again could also try and stay up for the Panther, considering the Brits have uh, mm. a larger influence. The Panther will probably be the better choice because there's a high likelihood we can just soon flop with another crew, in which case the Panther is going to be the better choice here for Caesar. Plus, it, with his machine guns, you can still deal with infantry nicely. We'll see what happens up there. We shall see what happens, but uh, Caesar is still struggling here. He's making some gains here and there, but after that rough start and just Prince spamming so many infinite sections, he's just able to quickly push back against Caesar. Jaeger's bringing in there. Still no son of Orbs are done for Caesar either. There goes section push back. One to go. Striking straight at the fuel point. Fight for the center here. Fulton is engaging here by the cemetery wall. Section push back. The Kedmiff at the Redding got Jaeger sort of watching from the house. Apparently, there's no one standing on the first floor. But he here to first floor is haunted from whom? Uh, he's never been here before. Uh, I don't know. It's a French? Shut up. If that house is really haunted, the French would have surrendered to it, so shut up. It looks like he's aiming here for the Panther. It's either that, or he's not considering going for any tanks soon. But I'm guessing he's aiming for the Panther, just spending some resources on the steel pond. And meanwhile, to ensure he has something to repair his Panther, and then go for the Panther. But he's going to need a few point because, well, not necessarily, it's pretty close to the Panther there. As for Prince, he could soon go for more Cromwell, which could also time to take a bit further upwards for the upgrade there, specialization, either hammer or anvil tactics. Sturm Puny are almost done there for Caesar. Cromwell moving about here in the far east. Might try to flank up and hit Caesar in the rear, or at least from an unexpected angle. So Prince is back in control. Interesting to note that with Prince, he's not actually mining a lot. Which makes it easier for Caesar just to push ahead and sort of try and gain back onto the map. Now 
Can I go Sturm Pionier? <clears throat> Folks have been pushed back by the AC. Seems uh, pretty quiet here at the moment. Repairing the battle group headquarters. Second Chrome away there for Prince of the Denmark. She's uh, scout the fuel now for the Panther. He just needs the manpower. Sticky predicament nonetheless. French could easily consider by way of you know digging some sandbags in there to make it easier for him to hold the center for an assault there from Caesar. Caesar clearly setting up them at the same time. It's not going to attack head on. It's going to try and sort of sneak up here through the south and that way sort of catch the uh, prince off guard. Very good move there by the way. Sensible. And so all this happening is also putting pressure in the north. That way further tying up resources here and there. Meaning either he gets the center or he gets the north. I mean as likely he gets both but uh, less less likely. At the same time Crom hang about. He's digging for the southern victory point there. Getting closer to the Panther, hitting the cough point as well. Very good, very sneaky. Up north though, we got Fultz pushing in there. Panther fast in the armored car, they're damaging his engine. Second push away from the northern field point. Being good progress here, center being gained as well. Second Cromwell arriving. First Cromwell not reacting to all of this. Can't easily move in there anyways. So Caesar seems to actually successfully, for now, pull off a dot of double attacks. We got the second Cromwell arriving here, so far ranked into his plans. He's moments away there from the Panther to push back against Prince with moments away. Stumpini has the section up north here, section wing about as well. And there you go, Panther on the way for Caesar and the 107th Panzer Brigade. Crom there sneaking about. Troops hiding about, waiting for the British assault. Up north here, we got the Jaegers versus the section here, Vetch 2 section running straight into it. He could probably consider popping some grenades here, inflict some extra damage. Crom continues up here, Jaegers sent scouting away. As Prince pulls in more resources to try and force them out of there, and up north the Jaegers uh, are retreating. Without really doing any real serious damage to the section, by the way. Up here, assault, oh, down here, assault fails as well. Panther is almost down there for Caesar. Almost, but not quite. Bit more to go, bit more to go. Jaegers engaging here with the section with the sprint guns. Healing enforcement going on. He's clearly waiting for the Panther to try and turn the tide here for the German army in this sector. And there you go. Panther running there for Caesar. For Deutschland. Cromwell hanging about. Mines down there, folks are fighting. And there you go, mines down, making it a bit harder there for Caesar to move around. And there you go, Panther moving towards here in the east first. Probably treating it right away, Sexton can't deal with the Panther, Stu and Pioneer Jake is moving in. Bit of shooting here, there you go, the flex the Cromwell, gets off a good hit. I don't tell she was turning around the Panther, I'm guessing he's anticipating a sort through here, and actually wants you to be ready for it. Oh, so you'd be better off just turning the front towards the Panther as well because oh, in yeah, most of the machine gun damage also happens with the hull machine gun. Jaegers finding the center, beating out the Thomas ever slightly. And the South Fultz is pushing it straight into the second Cromwell. Panther continues to not really do a lot. He'd be better off with some Fultz just trying to pop an incendiary grenade down into it. Forcing that that way. Right now Caesar's just wasting his Panther a bit. Just wasting it a bit. There you go, looks like he's realized he needs something else for that panther rather than that. That has something to do with the sex retreating here. Prince of Denmark doesn't want to waste his troops there either, it seems. But to be honest, using a 280 manpower section to keep 49 manpower and 100, oh, 200 fuel occupied is pretty good. And there you go, mobilizing the panther here. Or at least a bit, slowing it down. Giving his crown more time to escape. Not a bad idea there by Prince. So Caesar's having none of that as soon as the Panther's engine is fully back in order, he pushes back here after the Crom there, taking down to half health. Not enough length of tank weapons are nearby, in that regard, his heavy emphasis and just infantry with nothing else has left him a bit wrong. But there you go, two pension hits there on the Panther from the AC and the Crom. A second shot there, bounces, but Kevin for setting up. 
Still with just the AC, he's forcing the air. Sees the more careful with this Panther. Sees it's having on that. And the Saab pushing for the fuel there as well. Sunny thinks getting a lot more energetic once the Panther joins in the fighting. A lot more energetic. Fixing up the Panther there. You could go for an Austin to help deal with all the infantry. You could also consider setting up for a Yacht Panzer, Panther 4, or even a second Panther. Another cannon over there for Caesar. Cromwell there heading south to deal with the Jaegers as they try to steal, steal away the fuel and siphon away for the fatherland. There you go, almost got that Panther good to go again. Section's going to going away, Panther moving in. A lot of section there is the folks going to do is assault rifle, Bren gun fire, rifle fire, just sort of flying across here the road. In the northwestern corner of the village, British infantry tries to sort of defend it as German infantry clears them out one by one. In the south, Panther they're pursuing the crumb, pushing it away, closing in on veterans as you want. And Prince is going for a third Cromwell here. He could probably be using his Cromwells a lot more aggressively. It does feel like at times he's getting a bit passive. Obviously not wanting to clear this out directly. But he could have considered some artillery or some other mesh here. He could even just try attacking straight into Caesar's base. That way pressuring him into considering other elements to defend. In the south of the Panther pushes forward. They're pushing back a section. He's lost his squad somewhere. Looks like a full scrum this squad bit the dust in service of Germany. Mine's being laid down there. Very good. Caesar's getting more confident and uh, more active now on the battlefield. No specialization. He's even got access to that to the strike at the concentrate the fire bridge and sort of help break down this kind of sort of strong point here. Well executed. He can also soon. He can actually also pop hold the line in theory once you use it. But it's a lot trickier, but it's sort of think it could use the jar off. So it's understandable why more players don't use that one. There you go. Third Cromwell out here for Prince. Right. Ketting there for striking at the Krom, almost taking out in fact. But it does escape here, the encounter with German anti tank defences. Northern fuel being hit. Prince's tanks were just hanging about, their Panther's ending out. He's aiming for a Panther fall. Could be aiming now for a second Panther, which would certainly put some more pressure on all those Cromwells. Ken Flans hit Panther moving in, closing in the mines, shots fired in return, non connect. Second Cromwell on the fire, there you go, damage engine, and move straight into the mine, straight into the mine, down to half health here for the Panther. Looks like Pat Cromwell's going to move in for the flank here, though Kenworth is nearby, third Cromwell in the far south here, can't assist, northern Cromwell, they got the armor car, they're moving in. He's going for it, there you go, flanking the Panther, he's attempting to, one penetrating hit there from the AC. Oh dear, almost got the Panther though, Cromwell's almost down as well. Cromwell down, taken down by the Kedden, never possibly the Panther. Close 22. Armoured car escapes here really close. It doesn't quite have the interpol for They might be able to rush in the other Cromwell. No, there's some mine down there from Caesar, leaving Prince without any option for pursuing and destroying that Panther, which is going to slay with the tiniest slivers of health. Like, that is infinitely small there. And he lost the AC there. So he's lost the tank now and the AC here, and he didn't get the Panther. And it's still close to victory too, so that was some pretty bad news there for Prince. Had he maybe tried to mobilize the Panther there with the armored car's ability, he might have been able to work out something. There you go, Jaeger's fighting here in the cemetery. One squad battery, three others are rapidly approaching it. So now Prince's armored forces have been uh, rather crippled. By Caesar, though of course his armor's not in the best condition either, but he can more quickly fix it. Because Prince had to first get to a fresh sapper squad for section. Getting us all out there pushing out the section. Caesar gaining more and more command of the battlefield here. More sappers on the way for Prince to just help repair his tanks. He might want to consider Firefly or something else or take out for Comet. There we go. 
Panther out for Caesar. The German army. Section being slowly bled out there. A lot of Jaegers there with a lot of marksmen. And the South Assault going through here, double section. No grenades, by the way. Still a lot of munitions being floated. You could actually consider maybe popping for the hold of the line there when uh, Caesar tried to push through there. Might have given some options there for inflicting heavy damage to Caesar. Or called an artillery stuff. And there's really a lot of things they could have done, but for no reason Prince uh, just doesn't do. He's also still got a lot of unupgraded sections, which could have had brand guns, or even Piets added to them. So it does feel a bit uh, neglectful there by Prince here. I mean, he's got 400 munitions now floating about, and he's just not doing anything with it against Caesar, who's on the end being a lot more efficient with his resources. And there you go, going for a second Panther. Enemy threatening a, capture point. a second Panther adding its own in some uh, more beautiful German armor there. Fun fat Panzer Brigades, at least the early ones, but in fact only had Panthers for the tanks. Which, by the way, were meant to have gone for other Panzer Divisions, but because of this, pretty much meant that Panzer Divisions, which had more experienced tank crews, would not get Panthers. Whereas the Panzer Brigades for the inexperienced tank crews were then prioritized for the Panthers. So that was uh, some slightly weird decision making there by German High Command. But I like the Panthers there moving about. The Model A, as always. Part of me still kind of wants to see them use the Model D, but that's probably not going to happen. Unless they sort of get around to decide redoing Normandy in Companies 3, like I don't know, the last months of the war somehow. Maybe. There you go, Crumbs rushing it, pushing here, Jaegers pushing the back panther, but still fails to hit. Second panther moving in, first panther goes moving, in which case can lock down the Crumbs. There you go, trying to flank behind, do some damage, but he's going to get caught there by the Panthers. Jaegers taking us there, there you go, Tilly called in here. On the cluster. Barely avoiding a mine there, Panthers shoot. Another shot fired off. Mine goes off on the Panther, Tilly Ryan's down there, hitting the Belgrade headquarters. Panthers continue to pursue the Crommels, the Crommels trying to get one Crommel down. Abandoned even, Panther gaining eventually two. 75 high velocity gun versus less high velocity gun there from the British. There you go, almost got it. Panthers continue ahead here. Prince, tank forces are in a dire state as sees and the 107th Panther Brigade rides forth. Mortilify here, down to half health on both structures, but can't really sort of finish off the job. Section pushed back, and there's a crumble here that's abandoned, which in theory could take unless his tanks destroy it by accident. Oh no. Lost a section though here around. Looks like the artillery is over. And while he's lost a lot of infantry, now the princess has a lot more. Caesar does have a armored advantage here with the two Panthers. And two Oba Commando S Panthers at that, which is definitely the best of the two Panthers, until maybe the patch hits. Fixing up the Cromwell there. And then the Panther by accident destroys it. <laughs> My god, we were trying to fix it here, you idiot. Stop shooting. What if it gotten hurt? Oh, there's our uniforms that got dirty. Section here back defending the victory point, but certainly looking a lot rough here for Prince. Still no upgrades there, no sign of fireflies. Not, or maybe he's going for the crocodile here. That's only going to struggle versus double panthers. And he's, well, got less munitions floating about now, but he's still not expending it on something that would really help him. Here, Jaeger's just charging forwards, they're closing on eventually fort. Brent's section's just unleashing health from inside the trenches. More tank under sections out here. Another grenade assault, more steel hand granate. Section that refuses to give up, refuses to give up one inch to the hun. Got that panther moving forwards aggressively. Second panther good to go, could be upgraded with a machine gun there, a machine and give out. A lot of anti tank guns for Prince of is basically. I think stalling for something and now trying to bring up as much anti tank weapons as he can, though probably would have benefited a lot more from the anti tank gun sooner when he had more map to actually defend. Got an Osman here on the room now as well for Caesar. So two Panthers and a Flak Panzer here. Versus Prince's still large number of sections and now a lot of anti tank weapons.
Osmo being caught by the Cromwell. Bit of a problem there for Caesar. Trying to win the Panthers, but he's going to lose that Cromwell offspring there to the Cromwell. So that was less good there for Caesar. Got a bit too confident there and paid the price, though. It's not going to cost him the game either, I think, at this stage to lose the offspring when he's got two Panthers out. He'd have to do something terribly wrong then, or French would have to do something terribly right. But there you go, rushing in the Panther. Now, in this case, though, Caesar might be pushing his luck a bit there. He's risking, you know, anti tank grenades and other things there. Cromwell's almost down. Tank in a section that is near where nowhere needs to be seen. So that gives the Panthers more mobility. And allows them to just get out of uh, town once they, you know, blown up uh, Prince's remaining tank. And there goes second six, Panther going around, though, getting a good hit and rearm on the Panther. No PS either, which could help there as the Panther. There go down to less than half health. And another Osman out for Caesar and the 107th Panther get calling it to hit a base to just cover his retreat, make it difficult there for Prince to pull through. So he's basically using his blockade artillery or blocking fire. Slightly more advanced artillery tactic. But a sneaky one at that. Now he just needs his Panthers fixed up, including the one which is halfway to Veteran 3 having done quite a good job there for Germany. Second flat punch arriving. Only, I think, 44 something Austrians were built. But granted, no, most anti aircraft tanks were never built in overwhelmingly large numbers, like the most one first made for Germans, like over 100, maybe 200. And as the Flat Panzer Gepard was based on the Czechoslovakian 38T tank. That's the most built anti aircraft tank was in the German army, and they never built that many. Most of the anti aircraft things and same you know, infra self propelled anti aircraft guns in there. Most of the armors were based on trucks or half tracks. That's a little fun fact there. Panther firing away, Austin moving in. Enter tank gets moving up. Panther's blasting away there. Six pound gun sitting up. Shots fired at the Panther, bouncing. Second one penetrating. Now he's moving ahead. He also going to take the southern one, get behind. Panther's going to attack from the other side. Basically, sort of launching a pincer maneuver on the anti tank guns. Very nice work there. Make it harder for them to just focus things down. And force them to sort of consider which uh, tanks are the bigger priority. Now they're attacking from three different angles. That makes it very difficult then for the anti tankers to focus down any one target. Austin got a damage aim, but the Panther's going to move forward here. And we got all the line acts being utilized here by Prince. And a surprise twist here, though it's going to take some time before the actual bit with the aircraft comes in. And meanwhile, the infantry is just going to get buffed. That's not going to help an awful lot. This is all the tanks. Other anti tank the crew here. Need to quickly clear it out there. Almost got the Osprey in there. Down it goes, and there you go. Airstrikes going in. Panther takes some nasty hits. Anti tank and number two wipe. There you go. Rockets flying through the skies. A lot of air support called in here. Ospin goes down. Just keeps calling in. Crocodile called in here. The skies are alive. That's actually a lot of air support called in, to be honest. Nice. A lot of air support called in. That's actually kind of impressive how it really goes off. I honestly kind of wish we had more bidders like these for just all of the armies. Because they sort of have something nice going on for them. In a sense. But oh well. Got that crocodile out. Problem is, he's still got two panthers. He's also got most of the map. Prince still got a lot of infantry and he still hasn't upgraded most of his infantry though. A bit limited there, and there you go. Troops running out. A bit Crocodile rolling ahead. Both Every Panthers almost up. good to go. And to tank and swiftly crewed here by Prince. And then go head on attack straight to the Panthers and like Cadenafa. 
Crocodile immediately suffering intense damage and tanks have got their shots bouncing off the Panthers 80mm from sloped armor. Airs of Tillicorps in here on the anti-tank guns. Thing just drive around here. Troop need to be careful around the Panthers. And the Crocodile for the match. There goes Saxon Artillery. All colliding in there. Got the anti-tanks being wiped as well by the artillery. And with that, looks like Prince is uh, largely out of the game. There go Crocodile down second. Veteran 2 Panther up here. Four C's at two Veteran 2 Panthers. There go forces push back here in a bloody engagement. We still got most of the sections intact though. There you go, surrenders loss here for King and Country. Victory for the 107th Panther Brigade, breaking the Tommies. In a brutal slaughter here, and overall aggressive engagement here with a lot of interest from the Brits until the brought out armor. At the same time, they'd rather felt like you'd have done a lot more with this kind of strategy. I mean, you could have upgraded them sooner, had more weapons out. Hell, you could have you know, gone for the Cascades instead, had Piets out. There's a lot of things you could have done. Plus, you know, when you had the advantage, you could have maybe pushed for Comets or Church Trumps instead. So, it rather felt like at times he wasn't quite, I think, pulling his full weight there. Plus, he was at times rather passive, just waiting Caesar to do something, rather than just, you know, trying to further dig in and make it harder for Caesar to do anything. So, there, I think, were some issues there. Caesar, though, bit of a weak start, but a move to slow man to turn around. He sort of tried not to get bogged down too much in the center, sort of as the game went on. Hit the few points that way, slowly up the Prince and sort of warm down, making good use of the Panthers and not, you know, getting them thrown away. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, one subscribe to the friends, share it with everyone. If not, send in a replay and apply some feedback in the comment section. And, of course, a big thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, without which this episode would not have been possible. So, thank you all, and see you all tomorrow for a nice hunting episode.